Welcome to the Clark the Shark Expedition. Um, you have stumbled upon YouTube talk radio or something like that, that is going to forever ruin your brain. You had a good brain before, but now that you found Clark the Shark right here on the Sharky Show, uh, your brain might not work um, like the same anymore, if at all. Because here at the Clark the Shark Golden EIB Sharkerphone, where it's not a microphone, you guys, it's a Sharkerphone because it's made of solid gold. And, um, you know, it's not gold plated. I know erroneously, sometimes I report on here that the Sharkraphone is gold plated. I don't know why I say that. It could be that, um, weird things are happening to my brain now at age, uh, 58 going on 59 next month, April 27th. So please forgive me if I forget, uh, and don't forgive my, um, I'm serious, you guys. I hope I'm not getting like dementia or Alzheimer's or one of those because, um, and I'm not making fun of those or, uh, talking light or playing light, uh, with those or that it could be happening to me. I'm serious. I'm forgetting shit, like, uh, really dumb, ordinary shit. Like, um, you know, the Ruddles song, you know, the Buck Owens one, uh, I'll be sitting there like going brain dead. I've listened to that song since I was seven years old. You know, they're going to put me in the movies. And of course, Lars Ulrich sings the fucking song. Uh, the world's worst fucking shittiest drummer. And one of the w world's most miserable, awful human beings. Uh, that was the guy that the Ruddles hired when they fired Pete Best. They got, uh, you know, they got rid of a pretty good drummer and a, a good bloke who got all the chicks, you know, all the birds, you know, as John would say, you know, Paul would be like, yeah, you know, uh, Pete would get all the, all the birds, you know, and sleep out in his garden. Well, you know, Weppy, uh, Pete, why, why do we fire him? You know, he, he just got the girls, you know, he, yeah. You know, the Ruddles get rid of fucking Pete best Pete fucking best. And then they hired Lars Ulrich, this fucking terrible drummer. I keep forgetting his name. You know, I know he's got some other name, but I just fucking call him Lars Ulrich. Uh, because you don't replace a good guy like Pete Best with a fucking piece of shit, fucking pile of shit, horrible drummer named Lars. Uh, I don't know where the Ruddles found Lars. I think he was with Rory Storm in the Hurricanes or something, you know. But, I mean, I know that they had to get rid of Pete because he got all the girls, you know, and all the birds slept out in his garden, you know. But like, uh, they're just, they had to get an ugly guy with a big nose who's unattractive. So they hire Lars. So what happens? Lars suddenly gets all the chicks, you know, he gets like Maureen Cox and, uh, what was that other girl's name? Barbara Bach or whatever. I forget her name. You guys, I'm getting dementia. Getting things wrong a lot here on the Clark the Shark show. There, I just said it. Usually, I'm like Fonzie on happy days, you know, at Arnold's where he's like, hey, the Fonz is never. Rrr. You know, he can't even say the word, and neither can I, Clark the Shark. But now, I'm fucking saying it a lot right here on the amazing, still incredible Clark the Shark debacle, even when I get it, it doesn't matter because when I'm talking about the Moody Blues, in search of the lost chord, <laughs> now you guys know that I know this album. I'm not going to fuck this one up. 
you know, like the other night when I was talking about Lars or, you know, Uriah Heep or uh, The Who or some shit. Forget all that. That's in the past, you guys. By the way, a little side note. Zach Ulrich, Lars's son who plays with The Who, that fucking guy sucks on drums too. I mean, it's one thing that his dad can't play drums, but then the son fucking sucks on drums. I mean, couldn't the Ruddles have found like Ginger Baker or Keith Moon or like uh, Ian Pace or, you know, anybody, dude, maybe Dave Clark. It would have been better than Lars. But fucking forget all that, you guys. We're not talking about some great band from Liverpool with a shitty drummer. We're talking about the Moody Blues here on the incredulous, amazing Clark the Shark talk radio show right here from the Golden EIB Sharkrophone. It's not a microphone. It's the Wolfman Jack on crack, baby. shark a lam -a ding dong shark -a doodle doo where I admit I'm rarely as Fonzie would say, but sometimes it happens, you guys. I can't help it. I am turning 59 and I'm probably, you know, my brain doesn't quite work as well as it used to. You know, I, I eat uh, fish oil pills and raw garlic. I actually take a garlic bulb and then I get the little cloves. I peel off the little garlic paper. You know how God is pretty smart and he's like, garlic smells awful, so I'm going to cover it in paper. That's genius, God. But then me, Clark the Shark, I peel off the little garlic papers Dude, I wonder if they can make real paper out of garlic. I think they can, and I could be wrong, but I think they do. But anyway, I eat raw garlic, and it also fights cancer. And as you guys know, I have skin cancer. And I'm also that famous guy all over the world on the internet with crypto. I'm the guy with the cancer that that crypto company in Malta they ignore me when I email e email them. I'm like, hey, you guys, it's Clark the Shark. Remember, uh, I've got uh, tumors and legions and moles that are being removed all over me. Uh, my neck, my forehead, my back, my back of my leg, on my arms. Right now, I just have this growing one on top of my left wrist. And I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to remove it in honor of that crypto company in Malta until they communicate with me, yours truly, your humble servant, Clark the Shark, right here on WABC Radio, New York, number one worldwide syndicated. It doesn't matter if I'm syndicated or not. I am number one on Mars, Venus, Earth, you know, the third rock, of course. There's some life there. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, uh, and definitely, you guys, on Uranus, Clark the Shark, of course, the biggest uh, talk radio show host in the world, maybe only Sean Hannity, Mario Lopez, Rick Dees, uh, Howard Douchebag, Hush Bimbo, Mark Levin, uh, the Wayne Gretzky Fun Hour, you know, the two great ones, Mark Levin and Wayne Gretzky. These guys uh, are, none of them are better than me, Clark the Shark. I swear to God, you guys, I'm not pulling your leg. You guys think I'm full of shit, but I'm better than all of the aforementioned that I just did. Uh, also better than Michael Weiner, also known as uh, Savage, you know, the Weiner Nation. And uh, Roger Hedgecock, God rest his soul. I don't even know if he's dead or alive. Wherever he is, I'm better than him too. Now, there is one guy that I will admit that's better than me, you guys, and that's Dr. Demento. Uh, remember him from like KLOS or KMET back in Los Angeles back in the 80s? He had like Weird Al on and, and shit. He was really fucking good. He's got comedic chops up the ass. Way better than me. Timing and skills better than Clark the Shark. But Eminem doesn't. Dr. Dre doesn't. Uh, 
Steve Garvey does not, you guys. All of these guys are worthless amateurs at the microphone because they don't know the moody blues like me. And I'm always in search of the lost chord, people. I just had a deja vu just now, you guys, right here on the Clark the Shark Show. I'm not kidding. Now, I love this album cover. Now, this album came out after Days of Future Past, which I reviewed on here uh, on this Clark the Shark YouTube channel. And I've reviewed Days of Future Past like seven times now on YouTube. And they've all been banned and deleted because YouTube thought they were racist. I'm not kidding, you guys. Uh, many videos I've done and many whole channels YouTube thinks I'm like Alex Jones and I'm like a conservative or a Republican. And lately, you guys, I've discovered I'm more like a liberal. I used to be like all gung ho, like USA, USA, let's go kick some ass. And then my rent got to be 3000 a month. And I started talking to some people and they're like, well, dude, Sharky, let the free market decide. You just got to get more jobs and pay the 3000 a month rent. You got to learn how, bro. And I was like, wait a minute, dude, you really believe that? You think it's okay to have 3000 a month rent like we have here in California? And people are like, well, yeah, Shark. Yeah, Garth, of course. Uh, the free market decides, uh, bro. I mean, dude, I'm everyone sounding like a liberal. Uh, Republicans on the right side of the aisle. And, of course, we know our friends in the socialist Democrat utopia. They love high rent because they love high taxes. They love high inflation. Everyone on the government, cradle to grave, government dole fucking shit forever. But now it seems uh, Republicans have caught this disease and they like it too right here on the Clark the Shark proverbial show. But I'm not talking about politics, you guys. I'm talking about the moody blues in search of the lost cord. Now, I know this channel's going to get banned and deleted by the liberals at YouTube because, of course, Clark the Shark is racist, prejudiced, and biased. You know, liberals and Democrats are never biased or they're never, uh, they're always fair and balanced, just like Fox News and Hannity, you guys. Uh, of course, everyone's perfect except yours truly, uh, your humble uh, DJ MC microphone guy from the Sharkraphone, Clark the Shark, the Wolfman Jack on crack. I'm like the fucking village idiot here. I know nothing. Sort of like the dead in the Bible. Uh, what the fuck do I know, you guys? I'm only talking about In Search of the Lost Chord by the Moody Blues, 1968. And, uh, you know, the big four, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, I forget the other ones. You might as well throw MySpace on there, too, you guys. Uh they all just ban and delete you if you're not a liberal or a Democrat. You know how that is. And now uh, Elon Musk at Twitter, he'll ban and delete you if you're not Republican and conservative enough for him right here on the Clark the Shark Show. But me, I will never ban and delete any of you ever. I swear to God, you guys, I love it when people speak out and say – outrageous shit. I'll never ban you. And I will always love you. I swear to God, me, Clark the Shark. Uh, I love it when people speak out. I love it when people are free. I don't like censorship. You know, I'm a bit like Frank Zappa. I don't like inhibiting free speech in any way like liberals do. And now our friends on the right, at the Republican Party. They want to be this way too, but never me, Clark the Shark. In fact, I want you to think and say bad things about me and start a whole blog about how you hate Clark the Shark, but how you love In Search of the Lost Chord by the Moody Blues, a band 
uh, you guys, I keep forgetting to tell all of you how much I love this band. Um, I get so mixed up in other bands, I forget about the Moody Blues. Um, it's They are more than just days of future past, you guys. These guys have... 15 fucking incredible albums. I swear to God, they do even more than that. I'm not sure. But this one, I don't think they have a better one than this one from 1968. Right here on the Clark the Shark Show at 1-800-449-8255. In Search of the Lost Chord, you guys. It's melodic, atmospheric, textured keyboards, beautiful guitar, melodies. It's original. The thing I like about the Moody Blues they are inventive uh, originators, creative. Uh, they come up with shit out of thin air, out of nowhere that, that no other band is doing. Uh, they do, you guys. I'm sorry. And I know there are some people out there that hate this band and, and don't like these guys for whatever reason, but I love them. And uh, they are an important band in history. Uh, you know... After this album, they get even better. They go on a roll. They go on a run, you guys, of like seven, eight albums in a row uh, that are all incredible. Progressive rock, but no, it's more like atmospheric. Uh, you're on an expedition, you guys. You are on an adventure when you listen to the Moody Blues. And in particular, In Search of the Lost Chord, this album right here from 1968 that follows Days of Future Past, you guys. It does. And they just get better and better. And um, gosh, I don't care what the stars say. You know, you think I give a shit what all music and Rolling Stone think of the Moody Blues, the fabulous Moody Blues. Look how long this write-up at Wikipedia is for this album. I mean, it gets a longer write-up than days. It does, you guys. All music. Only a three out of five. And usually, um, all music gets things right. But this time, no way, baby. This is a five out of five. Music news gets it right. Five out of five. Rolling Stone. Uh, come on, you guys. Rolling Blunder mixed. That's wrong. Sputnik Music, four out of five. That's pretty accurate, you guys. Um, I don't know what Blender gave it or the others, but me, Clark the Shark, trust me, you guys. Side one, departure. Um, it's a narrative, you know, Graham Edge. <laughs> Very interesting way to, to uh, start it out. Just 044, but you're like, what the fuck is this? And then it goes into one of the greatest songs ever, Ride My Seesaw. Uh, top 25 rock and roll songs of all times, plural, you guys, all time. Lodge Thomas Hayward Pinder. Um. They're all singing, you guys. I don't know if they all sing lead. It says that here, but it's harmonies. It's uh, it's technical, you guys. Textured. I mean, they spend a lot of time doing their shit here in the studio, you guys. Um, written principally, I guess, by Lodge. Ride My Seesaw. Incredible song. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Written by Thomas and lead vocals by Thomas. Awesome. This album takes you on a journey. You you don't feel stoned or drunk or on drugs listening to this. You are too busy being intelligent, you guys. Don't use drugs and listen to this. House of Four Doors. I want you to be sober. Lodge. Awesome, you guys. And then Legend of a Mind, 637, one of the best songs by the Moody Blues ever. It is, you guys. Uh, I mean, if you want to hear something with textured atmosphere, amazing keyboards, guitar, drumming, just beautiful. Uh, you're just taking on a beautiful journey here, you guys. And yet it rocks. This is rock and roll. House of Four Doors Part 2, um, Lodge again. <laughs> I'm 
it's a bit of a little nightmare type thing, like a little rock opera within the album. Um, side two, voices in the sky. <laughs> Hayward. Now, we all know Hayward's a genius, you guys, but here he doesn't do everything. You know, he's kind of, it's a real democracy, democratic album. Uh, I would say it's one of the greatest Moody Blues songs ever, Voices in the Sky, but maybe not because they got so many great, incredible songs like The Best Way to Travel. Now, don't go drop any funny drugs, you guys. Be sober. Go to AA and NA. And come on, you guys. Be like me, Clark the Shark. Lead a boring life where you just pay for, like, cable TV and car insurance and storage units and you know you just come home hey honey uh have dinner and you know you, you guys we're all stuck in just a boring fucking existence maybe the best way to travel by the moody blues can get you out uh but i doubt it 312 awesome and visions of paradise hayward thomas <laughs> writing and Hayward singing. Um, side two is incredible. You're on another level now, you guys. Visions of Paradise at 415 might be the best song on the whole entire album, but it almost seems like each song is competing here for what's best, the actor. Um, I love that song, you guys. Hayward, uh, genius. And of course, the word. Um, just a little, once again, like a little narrative by Edge. <laughs> Pinder actually uh, is speaking here, but Edge wrote it. And then uh, Om, just O-M. 547, awesome. Pinder wrote it. Pinder and Thomas singing. Uh, it's such a democracy. There is so much democratic where everyone in this band is contributing. It's so important to the melodies that are so original. You've never heard them before. You know how the Beatles kind of rip off shit and so does the Who and the Stones and, and Zeppelin and, and everybody, you know, Jethro Tull. And there are some things like Frank Zappa that are totally original, uh, but he gets away with it, you know, because he's so weird. The, now, the Moody Blues are very commercial and they're pretty genius because you wonder how this band keeps coming up with all this fucking amazing shit like they do on side two of this album. But side one's amazing, too, you guys. It's all just an incredible invention of origination. Uh these guys are the innovators. They create, they start shit that other bands copy. Let's just be perfectly honest here, you guys. Justin Hayward, 12-string guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, just, you know, Mellotron, sitar. Uh, he can do it all. Genius. <laughs> There's too much genius in the band. Mike Pinder, Mellotron's piano, harpsichord, cello. I love cellos, you guys. You know Frank Zappa albums have lots of cello and shit. Acoustic guitar, bass, auto harp, vocals, Mike Pinder. You can't have the band without him and, and John Lodge. <laughs> bass. Uh, you know incredible genius uh the john entwhistle maybe of the band i mean cello tambourine snare drum dude he's playing fucking snare drum acoustic guitar i mean everyone's playing everything here ray thomas flute uh saxophones all the woodwind shit alto flute and he probably plays oboe and shit who knows and of course graham edge the drummer timpani uh, is he one of the greatest drummers ever, Graham Edge? I don't think so. You know, he's just really good. Uh, but he blends into the woodwork. You know, he gets lost in the beauty of the Moody Blues. Uh, you know, it's almost like any one of these five guys could do 
uh, anything. Like, here, you play, here, mate, you play bass, all right? You'll, you'll play the Mellotron on this song, and then uh, he'll play keyboards. You know, Graham Edge probably could even play, uh, dude, he plays piano. I mean, come on, he'll, he'll just chime in with a Mellotron, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he can't because Justin Hayward and, you know, Pinder and Lodge and Thomas, they're too busy. Uh, <laughs> there's just like everything going on here with keyboards, Mellotrons. Mellotron is such an interesting, interesting, interesting fucking instrument, you guys. It's got like tapes, um, you know. <laughs> The sound is tapes. You're playing basically tapes that make this, these sounds. And the moody blues on this album use keyboards, mellotrons, flutes, drums, everything. Uh, they go to the next level above Days of Future Past. And that's hard to do because, as we all know, the album that precedes this one is incredible. And it's like untoppable and unbeatable. And yet the Moody Blues do it here, you guys. I want you to buy this album here, right here in 2024. If you're a young person who's only 18 years old at Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, uh, you're just a little kid, man. You're 16 years old. I want you to buy all of the Moody Blues albums. Of course I do. But in particular, this one. And you tell them that you heard it from the mighty Clark the Shark. Here comes Shark to save the day. I'm like Andy Kaufman, you guys. I'm here to save your day and get you into great fucking music. Like this album, 1968, The Moody Blues, In Search of the Lost Shark. I mean, chord, you guys. I love this cover, too. It's like a baby, like, um, you know, it's a little bit like the Grateful Dead, you know, like there's a dead, like, skull and there's death and there's life, you know. It, it's, it almost looks like an abortion clinic or something. Uh you know, you see a skull on one side, you see a baby on the other. I almost fucking wish like maybe God would abort all liberals or something right here on the Clark the Shark show. And they'd look like that skull right there for eternity. Maybe. I don't know, you guys. But this album here um, is fucking amazing. It's fucking awesome. And you need to buy this more than uh, other albums I review. And, um, you know, I know my reviews get a little uh, out of focus. They get a little blurry, a little off base, a little off kilter, uh, maybe a little helter skelter. I don't know, you guys, but it's all hunky dory, baby, right here on the Clark the Shark show. Whenever I'm talking about the Moody Blues an incredible group. Uh, these guys are probably all like 85 now, but I'll bet you they're still wherever they are. Uh, they, some of them might even be dead. I'm not sure, but they're probably dreaming up or thinking up incredible music right now, somewhere as we speak right here on the Clark, the shark show here in the sharkulation where it's not a simulation it's a sharkulation because all of you are just figments of my isharkination. It's not an imagination. It's an isharkination. I, I'm just imagining all of you. And right now I'm picturing you all naked right here on the Clark the Shark show. Just go buy this fucking album. It's incredible. The Moody Blues, 1968. In Search of the Lost Chord. If you want to hear post-psychedelia, uh, almost kind of like indie rock, but no. Um, this goes beyond like those Beach Boys albums or the Who Sell Out or Zappa or the Beatles even, Sgt. Pepper or something, or the Stones, Satanic Majesties. This 
is incredible. You are on more than a journey. You are on an amazing journey here. To paraphrase Pete Townsend in The Who, this is before The Who, Tommy, you guys. This album influenced that one. If you know what I mean, right here on the Clark the Shark proverbial show. Buy this album. Be sure you do tonight and you tell them that Clark the Shark sent you. And I'm out of here, people. Peace.